Hi everybody, Monica here, Empower TV and Freedom Therapy Myofascial Release. Welcome back. I am here to share just a few things with you today um, on my weekly Q&A and self-treatment, your five-minute therapy treatment show. So welcome. And first of all, you know that I'm here for you and if you have any questions, concerns, anything burning on your heart and anything burning in your body, because when we have pain, it feels like it burns sometimes, right? So um, let me know because I'm here to help you. And let me adjust my mic because I think it's off. Okay, awesome. So I want to talk about a few things today. And uh, first of all, if you want to po post comments, you can definitely do that. I will be watching. So I would love to hear from you. Ask me any question that you feel would be helpful for you. And if you feel like maybe it's a private question, just DM me and I can address it on the show um, and ask answer the questions. So welcome again. And um, Okay, so there's a few things I wanted to address and then I'll give you some tips of how to have a good weekend. Um, if you're celebrating holidays, uh, you may be busy or maybe having a lot of fun with your family. Um, if you're not celebrating holidays, well, it's a weekend. So great time to actually take some time for ourselves. And um, I have been actually um, thinking about how to um, bring you some um, insights and, um, you know, ideas about how to create the best life that you can have when it comes to your, uh, physical health and, um, pain level or eliminating the pain. And if you have any, I hope not, but preventing the pain as well too. So, you know, there's something very important that we cannot stress enough. Because oftentimes, you know, if we have challenges, and I've been there too, okay, believe me, I've been through a lot of challenges since I was a child, physically, emotionally, mentally, I've struggled with, uh, with difficult um, situations. And um, there were times where my body felt like a wreck. And my mind did too. And I remember what happens is that we create this entire identity around our pain. Like I'm in pain, and that is my identity. This is who I am. I'm on a constant path of trying to get healthy, of trying to eliminate pain, of trying to go through my day without hurting. And it becomes like an identity. It had, it had been my identity in the past too, so that's why I know. But, you know, number one thing, and we do that before we even figure out how to help ourselves, before we even get to like, you know, figure out that we have tools and, and ways to um, stretch or to, to release pain from the body. Um, before that, we have to start to create a different identity for ourselves, right? So instead of I am in pain and I'm always trying to get better, we got to start shifting and asking ourselves, so wh who do I really want to be? What is my vision looking into the future? Like what would most motivate me um, on my path of reclaiming health, of reclaiming vitality, of reclaiming energy? So a great first exercise, if you may be struggling, if you may be having some issues with your body, with lack of energy, maybe um, you're having some chronic pain, you've had surgeries, you've been on this path for a long time, the great first step is to sit down and like look at yourself honestly and ask yourself that question, what do I really want? Like, what do I really want? And even if the first question, uh, first answer comes up and it says like, oh, I just don't want to be in pain. Um, that's okay. But uh, dig deeper. Like, what is your true motivation? What is your why? Like, you may have family, you may have kids, or you may have some passions in life, you know? Maybe you're an artist, or uh, maybe you love your garden. Maybe 
um, you love your job and you want to be the best, say you're a teacher, you want to be the best teacher you can be or anything. So just ask yourself, what is my true motivation? What do I truly want? And maybe you start to discover that what you truly want is to have the most beautiful garden in your entire neighborhood. Or what you truly want is to really contribute to your family and your children and be, you know, the best example. Or maybe what you truly want is to really enjoy that you have grandchildren and you can play with them and you can, um, you know, enjoy that family life. Anything that's, that feels like it's motivating for you, dig deep and find that one answer, just one is enough. And then you can write it down and put it somewhere big. Like that is my motivation. Okay. You know, maybe your motivation is to um, run a half marathon or run a 5k or, uh, you know, bike every day or walk your dog every day for an hour. You know, just something that you really connect with deeply. It doesn't have to be big, but it has to be motivating. Like you really see yourself there and like you really want to be that person okay and you really want to be in that situation you know so i'm not going to tell you what it is for you um but because you have to dig deeper and really really feel like you are resonating with this vision like it really lights you up sparks sparks something in you and then just write it down put like a banner somewhere or put it on on a sticky on on a sticky note on your on your bathroom mirror. It's the best place probably to see it. And then every morning when you get up, just look at it again. And um, step by step, as you're seeing that vision in front of you, you will see that your identity is changing from like this person who always feels like, uh, you know, they are just struggling with pain or trying to conquer some problems that are happening, you know, like, how do I get rid of this pain right now? You're going to start seeing yourself in that vision. And then you can take small steps. Like maybe you want to run a uh, half marathon. Well, and you cannot run at all yet, but you see that, see yourself in that vision. Maybe you used to run in the past. And so maybe you're just going to start walking every day for 20 minutes. And you're going to increase that every day for, you know, by like 10 minutes. And then maybe you, after like a month of that, you start to um, run for five minutes. So just little incremental steps, but you're always seeing that vision in front of you. And that's the most powerful healing tool that we have on the planet is that vision. Okay. So it's not the five inch ball, although this is number two of most powerful healing tools on the planet. I'm just kidding, but <laughs> uh, so this is my, this is like my motivation for this weekend. Um, and I wanted to talk just uh, briefly about different ways to um, treat your body physically because on that pathway, right? If say, I want to be able to run uh, a half marathon in six months and I, uh, so I'm going to start implement different, um, different routines, right? That walking, you know, maybe some strengthening exercise, whatever you feel like is right. But then you can also implement like a daily self-treatment routine and ask yourself, what in my body is stopping me from achieving that goal? So for example, you know, I see a lot of people these days, it's become like an epidemic, having problems with shoulders and having problems with uh, like upper back, um, I think it's becoming worse and worse because again, like we're in front of the computers all the time. And now we're like in front of the zoom thing and, um, in front of the phones constantly. So, um, there's so many things that we can do for our, um, opening our rib cage, opening our chest. So I want to suggest a few things for you that if you're struggling with, um, your, um, like forward posture, or if you're struggling with your upper back problems or shoulder problems, if maybe it's hard to raise your arm, but you know you don't have an injury, but it's just kind of hard to move your arms or you get very weak in your hands, in your arms. Um, 
all those issues that are affecting the upper body. There's two things I wanted to suggest for you today. And one of those things is going to be do some rotational movements. What are rotational movements? Rotational movements are movements turning, right? And why is it important? Because we are vertical creatures, right? We stand up and most of our, and because we have eyes in front of our head, and I'm, I'm sorry, in the middle of our face, we sort of tend to look forward, straight forward. So we really live on this vertical planes a lot. And really turning is not a huge thing. This is not like I don't walk around turning around all the time, right? But it's a very important movement. So uh, what I wanted to um, suggest for you today is just a very simple um, twist, okay? And I'm going to use my chair. Right, so what I want you to do, you've probably seen that before if you follow, if you know my fascial release therapy, but I still wanna teach you that. It's a very important one. So I sit sideways on my chair and I'm going to be doing some twisting. But, you know, with my fascial release, with this kind of treatment, we'd never try to force anything. We never try to like go all the way, trying to like torque ourselves to, too far because that only creates resistance in the body, okay? So the, if I'm forcing and trying too hard, it's going to create more resistance in my body. So what we're trying to do is just go with the direction, with, with the amount of stretch, and this applies to everything. So the amount of stretch that my body takes in easily without forcing and without struggling. So we're gonna practice some rotational movements because as I rotate my torso, you see I am stretching everything that is around my rib cage, right? And you will feel that if you sit down and I want you to sit straight, like imagine you have a string from the top of your head up to the ceiling and your tailbone is planted on the table, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, on the chair or floor. So your spine is straight and you're not going to be bending forward, right? You want to keep straight the entire time. And see, I'm just going to hold on to my chair a little bit. And this is as far as I can really go without forcing myself. I could force myself and go further, or I could force myself and my, see, my chitwas are actually peeling off the chair right now. I don't want that. I want to keep my uh, sits bones planted and my straight, my spine straight, okay? So I'm just creating that rotation in the torso and the chair is helping me. So, and then the great way to know which way you wanna go first is see which way you are turning better. So I can go maybe as far as here, this way, and I feel like I can go much further this way. So I'm gonna turn my chair around Here you go, as I'm breathing, I'm actually there we go. Expanding in my rib cage.
And as I breathe out, I'm just letting myself soften and move. So never forcing. It's a really nice exercise. And as I breathe out, I fill myself up with air opening my ribs. I imagine that my ribs are opening, stretching, filling up. And as I turn further, I'm just kind of allowing myself to get more of a twist. Okay, so you want to do that for five minutes each side, okay? And then once you're done with this side, you're going to turn around and do the other side that was harder. And so I'm not going to do that for five minutes because I wanted to show you something else as well. But um, the task today is to uh, get your chair and spend 10 minutes, five minutes on one side, five minutes on the other. And you so important part, you're breathing into your rib cage and allowing the breath, allowing the air, the oxygen to fill up and actually physically stretch your ribs, okay? Because a lot of those shoulder problems that we see, a lot of neck problems actually come from the ribs being really restricted and tight. So I'm like super tight here and then I cannot move anymore. My shoulders start to hurt, okay? So this is one thing that's very important to address okay so if you're having any issues with your upper body with your shoulders with your neck with your rib cage try this so remember you want to be planted on the chair you want to have the string going up your ceiling uh, really connecting and straight spine and you want to first go in a direction of ease which is the easier one where you have more opening and um, never forcing, never going beyond what feels good, okay? And then you go the other way as you complete your five minutes on one side. And after that, you can just kind of shake it off. Feel that you can breathe more because you've been practicing opening those ribs. It's honestly a beautiful exercise to do every day in the morning because you're getting more air and oxygen and you're actually oxygenating your tissues, you're getting rid of the toxins of anything that accumulated in there. Okay, wonderful. So then follow up. And this is my favorite exercise ever. And I'm sure you know it. Because if you've been following my fascia release treatments or uh, YouTube here, so or Facebook, um, you just put your ball between your shoulder blades on the spine directly. Okay, so I don't know if you can see right. So I show it all the time because I don't tire of talking about this one. So you're putting it right on the spine between your shoulder blades, right? So it's right in the kind of across from here, okay? And then you just, you lay down on the floor and you can sort of imagine like you're doing a snow angel, which, so you just sort of see which way, where do I, my arms want to go, right? And in Arizona, we call it a saguaro <laughs> because we don't have snow angels, right? Um, and just kind of see, so do I want to be here? Do I want to be here? Do I want to be here? Where do I get the most nice opening and stretch? And then just you letting yourself open up and relax on the ball that you have. Remember the balls? And I actually brought a couple different ones today. So this is our staple standard four to six inch ball. That's inflatable. And... This is like, I have this big one and I love this one. I actually put it behind my shoulder blades too, um, between my shoulder blades, behind my spine. And I love laying on it because it's bigger. So it gives me more opening. So decide if you have very, a lot of restriction as you, you've not been working on yourself, use a smaller ball. If you feel like you're getting there and like you're not really opening and expanding, you can start getting bigger ones, right? So, and this one has a little spikes just for fun. Kind of feels good. Uh, so you're getting more pressure into your ribs as well. So um, just play around too and see how far you can open. And the more you want to get the stretch, the bigger the ball will be. But remember, never to force anything. And um, always just go with your body. Like 
and use breathing. So for today, uh, what we discussed is creating the big vision that you want, even if that vision, you feel like, oh my God, this is too hard. But what will help you is to remember that you take one step at a time, just one little step. But if you focus on the vision, on, the, on your future identity, on what you want to be, um, you, you'll see that your life will become so much easier. It will be so much easier to start to heal and feel good, okay? And then second, we have two exercises for opening the rib cage, opening the chest, opening the shoulders. And for anybody who has shoulder problems, neck problems, uh, breathing problems, like it's hard to take a breath, we do the... Um, we put the ball aside. We're gonna do this twisting, right? Or rotational movement. And then we're gonna lay on the ball between the shoulder blades, right on the spine and on the floor, opening your arms and getting that stretch. So this is desire for today and enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the holidays if you are celebrating Easter or if you're not, just have a great day. So. I'll talk with you soon and see you, but see you then. Bye-bye.